How might the wolf fang fist stand up to someone who's actually fought a wolf before? What's up everybody, Steb Days here and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Days. The worlds of Dragon Ball and video gaming have very interesting points of intersection, don't they? You got Super Sonic and you got Super Saiyan. You got green people who ants from eggs and you got green people who ants from eggs. You have an empire conquering planets with a dark lord at the helm and... Okay, that one's kind of Star Wars, but you get what I'm going at. Besides, Star Wars has had popular games with stories that you don't see in the movies. In fact, it's because of Dragon Ball's Galactic Emperor that we even have this timeline to begin with. After all, the Lilat system can't be that far out of Frieza's influence, can it? Previously, the Star Fox team had actually joined the Frieza forces after Frieza made them. As a matter of fact, their first mission with the Frieza forces had to do with taking out any pods that were trying to escape planet Vegeta. Fox let one go, and Frieza showed him what would happen to his team if that happened again. But Falco kind of talked some sense into Fox the best way the bird brain knows how, and telling him that the team just wasn't the team anymore, as he and Falco escaped the Frieza forces, abandoned ship, and went to Earth. In what are you doing? Hurry up! The last part, we got to see Fox take down Jocko's ship, meaning Jocko is Earthbound for a while, and assist Goku in kind of learning common stuff. They eventually met Bulma, and while Fox was kind of incredulously about the whole going on an adventure again thing, it wasn't long before Grandpa Gohan got through to him, and he joined Goku and Bulma on the adventure for the seven mystical Dragon Balls. They bested Oolong, they bested the Bear Thief, they saved the Turtle, they got Goku the Nimbus, and Fox a spot on that training regimen that Roshi was interested in. With Oolong as part of the party heading towards Mount Frypan, or Fire Mountain as a lot of the Americans who've seen that version call it, this is where we continue, what if Star Fox was part of the Dragon Ball canon? The situation with Bulma misplacing her capsules, it doesn't really matter because Fox has his own capsules. Being stranded really isn't a concern here, however, what is a concern is that Fox doesn't have any hovering vehicles. And there's no way he's getting the R-Wing out in front of Bulma. Nope. He would use one of his cars in order to try to traverse across the desert a lot more comfortably, but eventually the same thing as in the anime would happen where they're huffing it, because that car is now in a ditch. Bulma would pass out all the same, and instead of Oolong opening his trap because Fox would tell him to shut up, you know, not really thinking that a smart aleck pig is gonna matter much, he was kind of against Oolong joining the party. Yamcha, however, would take to action hearing that Oolong was Poir's bully. That transformation battle still happens, but honestly, it just happens pretty quickly, and we get on to the main event, Fox vs. Yamcha, which currently Yamcha is pointing a machine gun in Fox's direction. Fox, however, just kind of grins a little bit. You want to shoot us? All right. You better be fast on that trigger. Huh? Someone who thinks he's faster than a bullet? Are you really that cocky pooch? Try me. With that, a Fox illusion and the flippy thing that he does when he does an up smash is all it takes to send the gun flying. Let me be clear though, just because I'm describing his movement in Smash Ultimate terms doesn't mean he's he might canonically be able to do that, he might not. I figured that his Smash Brothers moveset in Smash Ultimate, seeing this, that's kind of the most recent iteration, I would have preferred Melee, but Fox's Smash Ultimate moveset would in fact work wonders as a technique set for the world of Dragon Ball. So that's how I'm describing it. Since the G-Diffuser still work, Fox could abuse moves like that Except for when he uses Foxfire for the first time. That introduces a bit of a complication. The first time he uses Foxfire, he's able to sweep Yamcha aside. The second time, however, he just kind of dashes in the air at him. After the fire didn't go off, Fox is very concerned about this. And after he gets thrown aside by Yamcha, landing on his feet still, 
he does realize another thing that's wrong. His boots seem a lot heavier than they should be. It's similar to how if you get a little bit of sand or a rock in the charger of your phone, it, you can't charge it, but connection won't go through. That's similar to what's happening to both Fox's legs and his G-Diffusers in the middle of this fight. And most of his skills were G-Diffuser related. Sure, he's able to get out of Yamcha's way and use the Fox Illusion to keep up with Yamcha, but think of all the distance he's covering. That's a lot of sand being forced into this technology. Fox uses his laser pistol to kind of threaten Yamcha, but Yamcha's not buying it. Fox has been too good of a fighter up to this point. Something's wrong with him. And if he knew about the power pole and Grandpa Gohan, I think Yamcha's clever enough to know that this is a tactic. He charges forward at Fox, using his sword to deflect a beam that ends up ricocheting and piercing through Fox's shoulder. After the deflection, Yamcha stands with his foot on Fox's chest. The sword just inches away from his muzzle, glaring down with a grin. Yamcha wins this conflict. Any last words before I cut you up, mutt? I've got three! Huh? Power pole extend! Goku saves Fox right on time! And Yamcha gets a power pole to the chest, just like in the anime. Due to his fatigue and being winded from the power pole, it takes a minute for Yamcha to get up. And by that point, Bulma's is awake, she sees Fox on the ground, and immediately moves to help him out while Goku is covering them. When Yamcha sees Bulma, same thing happens. He retreats, and Oolong's camper van comes in handy while Fox is literally legless from the knees down. Everything happens just like the anime here, except Fox is just kind of at the table, working on his G-Diffusers, cleaning them up, making sure that they can work the next time, because that was close. Yamcha really could have done some damage to him. As a matter of fact, he could have done some damage to his tech. He got first aid help from Goku and Bulma, sure, he's patched up in the shoulder, but it's not until really late that night, Goku's asleep, Oolong's asleep, and Bulma actually comes down and sees Fox tinkering with his G-Diffusers. She thanks him for fending off the bandit, but Fox still says nothing. And that's when she asks about the G-Diffusers, and again, Fox says nothing. He needs to keep the Frieza forces away from this planet, and if one mad scientist, even though this girl's just a girl, ends up attracting the Frieza forces, that would spell bad news for this entire planet. But then she asks a very important question. Why replace your legs with metal prosthetics? Doesn't seem very useful. He would share stories about Star Fox, his hotshot pilot team, making it seem like they operated on Earth as opposed to space. He's still keeping the idea that the R-Wing is a plane, but this does let him get some steam talking about the good old times. He just gets something, some things off his chest, and that helps Bulma out because Bulma's actually respecting him instead of trying to tinker with his stuff when he's not looking. Eventually, Fox does pass out, and Bulma is able to get him to the couch, because without the metal legs, he's considerably lighter, and lay him down, get him to sleep, and when Fox wakes up, he puts his now shined up metal legs back on, grunts at the nerve endings reconnecting, and looks over to the table where Bulma's asleep, but his stuff looks all fixed. They're all clean, perfect order, polished up, done diddy. Bulma did a good job after he passed out, and that's when he sees something that she couldn't help but tinker with again. There wasn't any tools per se, but she could have hid some of those. And that's when he realizes that his laser pistol looks a lot different. The laser sight had been removed from it. Fox shook her awake, real angry at the fact that she touched his stuff, and that's when she tells him to just shut up and listen to her. She decided to open the window and shoot a couple beams out the window just to kind of understand how it functioned. And that's when she realized it ran out of juice really quickly after those two shots. The battery system must be, well, going on it. 
he has been on the planet for years. What she did, effectively, was allow the gun to be battery powered. These batteries have solar panels on it, so they would charge with the heat of the sun. And with the three batteries on the windowsill so that they can charge as they drive out of the, hopefully out of the entire wasteland, that is where Fox can learn to reload the gun. So she shows him how to load it, and then he tries it out. It functions just like normal. Turns out Bulma's a lot more handy than he had previously thought. He tells her so long as she doesn't tinker with his G-diffusers, keeps them clean, keeps his boots clean and all that, he doesn't mind her touching his stuff, but she is not allowed to use any of it or, you, or show it off in public situations, in, in like cities or anything like that. If she has to use his pistol, fine, but try not to. So what do you all think? Do you think the Ox King is going to be an issue? What about the Carrot Monsters Town? Go ahead and leave a comment below! For more What Ifs in the realms of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, including what if Mario grew up in Sarasa Land, that part's right around the corner, everybody, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. To support me on the Stevdes Patreon, or to join the Stevdestrians in the Stev Discord, check out the Stev description below this video. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one! Ciao!